Okay, first of all, uh, I wish to Uh, sir, I think you have muted. Are you able to hear me now? Uh, yes, sir. Audible, sir. Uh, sir, your voice is not coming on the Zoom. What I'm saying that I will connect you through this call and you can change the slide uh, through that. You please unmute me, sir, on the WhatsApp. Hello. Yeah. Are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Now you can start your presentation, sir. Please do not unmute on this WhatsApp call. Okay, okay, okay. Very well. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, extremely sorry that I am uh, I am on technical glitches, so I couldn't. Uh, is there any echoing? Uh, sir, a little bit echoing, but you can continue, sir. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I, I wish to mention that I am Abhi at uh, uh, South Africa for uh, establishing a particular institute, Forensic Science Institute, for this country. So what I have uh, found is there are certain differences uh, that the method of investigation Though it is uh, the routine investigations are being carried out, but the procedural manner that they are carrying out is certainly uh, distinctive. That is what I want to discuss about today. So I have taken uh, this particular topic on the advanced methods of investigations in uh, ballistics, that is firearms and ammunition. So uh, as you all know, in internal ballistics, there are three types of uh, three types in uh, ballistics, those are internal, external and terminal. Internal ballistics, that is launching of a projectile, whatever the internal mechanism that is there in the uh, particular uh, 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 weapon, that is what we call it as an internal and external is the trajectory, the trajectory of the bullet that uh, traverses whatever the behavior of the bullet during the trajectory. And the third one is the terminal, that is wound ballistics, we call it as. Why we have to uh, take this ballistics uh, that is exclusively on the firearms as a core area of forensic sciences? As you all know, there are three core areas, that is fingerprints, coaching documents, and ballistics. Now, ballistics in firearms, why it has been included as a, a core component? Because of the main reason, there is a particular, uh, uh, it is also a weapon, but uh, unlike other weapons, this uh, the, this is uh, this has been included in ballistics or uh, core area of forensic because of the main reason, it is going to have a imminent danger, that is whether suicide or homicide, that is the main reason. And the next one is, in spite of being uh, very smaller and uh, lighter in its weight, that is the mass is very, very lesser when it comes to uh, mm, bullets, but still it is lethal because of its high energy, that is higher kinetic energy it is importing. So that is what determines the lethality based on the kinetic energy that is imported. So then now we have to discuss about the investigative protocols, what we follow in ballistics. That is first one is I have to mention about the ballistic fingerprinting based on which the entire investigation procedure is being done. That is the analysis of any particular tool mark which are found there in any ammunition. Next one is also helping us to understand what exactly the particular type of a weapon that has been used in the crime scene. Third one is the specific distinct iron marks, those are present over there, will give a exact picture about the type of a weapon and the ammunition used. Next one is based on the uh, characteristic features at the uh, 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 wound, 
that also gives the rough idea about the type of weapon that has been used or the type of ammunition that was used and apart from that more importantly the range of fire we will be able to establish even in the if there is any sort of manipulations that has been done in the particular weapon still we are able to identify them based on the contemporary methods that we follow now so here i want to uh, mention about different types of uh, such impressions or striations with which we are able to identify the bullets or the ammunitions these are some of them which we have taken through the comparison microscope and these are some of the uh, injury injuries which we i mean which we have come across during the uh, case work uh, whatever we call it as a temporary and permanent uh, perforations these are the point these are some of them which we will be able to identify okay now moving on to the next important element that is how we are going to identify the weapon or the ammunition usually we follow the uh, method of gsr particles to identify the particular ammunition that has been used and apart from that there is a possibility of criminal profiling also used here i'll give you an example that is based on the specific striations or the tool marks those are present in the ammunition and also the gunshot residues those are found at the crime scene collected at the crime scene and analyzed in we will be able to establish the not only the type of weapon or ammunition that has been used apart from that we are able to mention about the identification of the firearm and also the range of fire now i am uh, my sincere acknowledgments are to the uh, national police forensic science institute uh, window namibia because uh, this particular laboratory i have taken this particular study so they are having the integrated ballistic identification system which is actually in our country in india also we have uh, in our own laboratory we have the setup but the thing is uh, as far as the specific point of uh, the positive results are concerned it takes more time or labor years and more importantly the database available with that is usually associated with the uh, a specific or regular weapons which are actually supposed to be standardized one well. but most of the times here when i came across here the specific weapons those are used are always country made ones rather they are all non standard weapons but still they have a specific methodology that is they are i, I can see a series of crimes which have been committed i should say at least 20 cases we are uh, coming across in a month in this smaller country that too based on the specific type of ammunition so as soon as i came here i have developed a, a specific database for this particular uh, weapon ring especially on the uh, specific tool marks which are available just based on the comparison microscope examinations so with which uh, we could have one database developed i remember uh, in the beginning uh, of the session keshav kumar sir was mentioning about the database to be created for the uh, this ballistics so that really that is a most significant step that is what i have suggested here and uh, here uh, i i have to thank all the all my colleagues here because they have been following what the uh, specific uh, advice i uh, suggestions i am giving based on which we are able to give a valid opinion and also reliable conclusions not only that in addition to that we are able to do uh, the scanning electron microscopy examination with which the gsr analysis can be categorized and also for that also we have got the uh, good and reliable uh, results based on the quality and quantity of the substances those are detected these are some of them which are classically we have come across 
these uh, groups based on which we have identified these particular uh, ammunitions. And this is one such system which I have suggested that is a multispectral detection system, which is easier for anyone to identify the uh, 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 gun, gunshot residues in the particular crime scene based on the luminescence that is almost 250 to 350 nanometers in the uv ranges we are able we are capable of identifying or locating them and we are able to get the better results with the EDXRF analysis these are some of the results which uh, uh, we could get and apart from that we could get the uh, ranges of fire also based on the specific concentrations with which these particular particles are dispersed. So uh, among them, we could see that lead has the highest dispersion, followed by copper, phosphorus, zinc, and antimony. And that too, we have uh, got the uh, specific GFR particles analyzed through two different uh, ranges, that is 5 and 10 meters, that we have collected based on the particular uh, uh, mechanism, that is, in addition to the uh, UV examination, we have uh, further developed a mechanism, we call it as a optical-based uh, luminescent uh, particles. Those are usually pyrin, which is a classical one, which we will be able to detect about. These three uh, elements which we have associated with the uh, DSR particles, which make them more and more fluorescent, thereby we are able to get the quantity and quality of those substances or the residues. So this is, uh, uh, this is one particular part with which we have analyzed. That is, one methodology is EDXRF, then subsequently the scanning electron microscopy, and further uh, confirmation we have done with the differential uh, thermal analysis, and also we have done the uh, mass spectrometric analysis also. Apart from all, even we have used Raman spectroscopy. Out of all this, we could get a consistent results in each and every such uh, experimentation. Thereby, we could uh, get the reliable results based on which consistently we are able to prove that the conventional methods of analysis are going to be proved a better one than the modern examinations. Uh, the modern methods of uh, techniques which we are using, maybe probably uh, they may give precision in the results, but uh, it will be more laborious and the limitations are there as far as the uh, quantification is concerned. These are some of them which I am able to make it as a mixed powder with the uh, I mean, mixed uh, uh, gunpowder along with these three particular methods that is fluorescent and also CNTT. So what I conclude is that it will be you, uh, better to use the conventional methods of uh, uh, investigations or instrumentation based on which we will be able to get better results provided we are having the good databases and naturally the uh, based on the modus operandi the criminal or terrorist organization will have a specific type of weaponry or ammunition they will be using uniformly because of their success so naturally we will become successful once we use the same databases using the conventional techniques because we are not having the access for the ibis for the non-standard weapons thank you all